first. Fabulous. Well, I'm going to start with a maybe a non not so popular Christmas colour, pink. Oh. I, li I do like a bit of bright pink at Christmas. I must admit. So I've got um, an A6 card blank here and I'm going to show it some pink at the bottom and just blend up. Yeah, I like sort of more sort of unusual colours. But these are, the, these are the colours of this year. What, this, this bright pink? pink? I know, I, I know. I, I, well, it's pink. No, it's pink and purple. It's sort of peacock colours. Ah. No, they really is. It really is. It, when, they had the, when they had the Christmas show later, earlier last year, it was uh, pink and purple, so sort of um, dark peacock colours are the colours of this year. Like turquoise blue and things like that. Yeah, yeah, I do like a bit of bright pink. So I've kind of gone for an ombre effect on the front of my card. And then do the same as well on the inside, right across, right across on the inside. I won't bore you and do all of that blending, but that's what I've done. And then I'm going to take that beautiful Christmas tree die. I think it's lovely that we've got the both halves here. So obviously you can use it, um, you know, on different sides. Just use it as a singly. Because that is good, because otherwise you don't need, you'd be limited to what you could do with just the one side. Yeah, so you can nice. only have it on the one. So with this, you can pick. Nice that there is which two. One you want. Yes. So I'm going to measure the the width of this. So it's it's about five and a half, and I'm going to measure five and a half from the right hand side and make a mark because I'm going to score the front and I'm going to use the tree on the front of my card. I can't see where I've scored now. Let's measure it there. What's the first thing you do when you get these home? When you when they send you all these dies, what's the first thing that you do? The where first do you thing start? I do, I, I slice the right hand side of the packaging. Okay. Because I I, I want to quick, quickly access everything rather than unsticking, unsticking the bottom. So I slice all the right hand side and then I've got this folder that I keep them, keep them all in neatly. So that's the first thing I do. And then I pick out the ones that, you know, you get all the inspiration from. Where all the ideas come to you. OK, so I've scored it and I'm going to fold this front piece back. That's why I've done the pink on the inside as well. Ah. So you see it's just over half because the die is actually wider than, than half of it. Half. So I've just gone over. OK, now I want to cut the tree into here. I'll use this one into here against my fold. Now, it doesn't have a cutting line down the middle so, so that you can use, use the die doubled up, which I will do in a second. So, but I just want it shy of So will this cut that. through both layers? Say again? Because you folded that over, so it's going through two lots of paper. I'm will not, it cut... no. Oh, I'm not. I'm just folded it so I can see that I want to miss that, um, that folded, oh, okay. scored edge there. So I just want, I'm just sort of checking that it's going to die cut in the correct place. And now I'm going to unfold it oh, and run it through my see. machine across there. I could go all the way, but I probably, what I would do is get the plates, put it here, put it up this end, actually, and put the top one just shy of that fold, just to make sure. That it doesn't go through. Yeah, and then run that through your machine. Not a problem. And then it'll come out like this. So there's the front. Look at that. And there's the fold that I created, which I want the tree to fold back on itself. And then it, you can see the pink that I've done on the inside as well. Okay, and then to add some more interest into there, I need the other half back. So I'm going to use the tree as a whole tree. So I'm going to tape these two together and run this through the machine so you don't it's nice that you don't get that cutting line across the middle so when you die cut it I'll cut it into purple card then you do get the one piece which is nice oh. and they're like fold lines in the middle there so we can sort of fold it over 
I just think it's so delicate and gorgeous. And these dies cut beautifully. They are amazing quality, I must admit, the Marianne design Because you've got that dies. line, because you've got that sort of bigness in the middle where the dies meet, could you do the old school, cut one down the bottom and cut one at the top and sort of scissor oh, them together? Sort of slot them in yeah, like so they that. Go on, so, yes. yes, you could create a nice centrepiece like yeah. that and a whole tree, definitely. I kind of sort of doing a similar idea. I to think that. we should just repeat this show at nine o'clock. All my ideas are here at the moment. <laughs> I don't know what will be at nine o'clock. I think you should be here, Adam, in in this position. Oh no, no, you're no, no. I'm fine here behind this counter. <laughs> right then, so I'm going to glue this side of the tree, my purple tree, onto the front there. So that, that it's now sort of floating above this front panel. Like that. Well, that's nice. And then I'm going to put some glue down the centre. Put some glue down the centre. Sounds and a silly question, but any particular glue you use, like quick grab, or is it just normal yeah, glue? Yeah, just a tacky glue. Okay. Yeah, just a, a craft tacky glue. I do like a glue stick as well. I, I use both of them quite a lot. We were only talking about this yesterday. That you don't see that many t crafters using a glue stick. Oh, I do like a glue stick. I do, yeah. Me and, me and our cake were <laughs> talking about that yesterday. Ah. Right, so everyone so uses got tacky glue and stuff like that. You don't need all the big glues. A glue stick will work just as well. Oh, it, I, I do, yeah. I'm, I'm lost without a glue stick. Yeah. They, 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 they're good for doing different jobs. So I've, got, I've, got, I've gone mad and cut loads of these. Four all together in different shades of pink. So I've ended up with a pink very similar to the picked raspberry colour. So I've gone for a darker pink, a dusky purpley pink, and then a darker purple. Nice. So I want to allow that to dry, really. And then what I'm going to do is fold up all my layers to create this lovely tree that sort of stands at the front of your card. I think it looks really effective. As soon as I saw this, I thought, oh, I want to do something like this with it. So that kind of looks it's like... It's really effective, but quite quick to do, isn't it? it you is. could do, You could batch make quite a lot of these. Which is sort of what you, you had. Your idea was sort of very similar to that. To so that. I just need to caption now, really, just to make it bring, bring everything together. And I do like these, these, this sentiment set. I just love the typewriter font with a brush lettered um, caption as well. It's beautiful. And I love that for you. So I'm just going to grab a spare piece of card. So remember, these sentiments do come with your... Um, they come with your tags, uh, and they also come with your little foliage, uh, with the dies that you've got there as well. Uh, there's so many of them. Going $26.99 if you want the sentiments as well. Uh, so you do get all of the sentiments uh, that's in there. So there's so many things that you're getting. So you're getting all this for £26 and 99 pence and you're getting 11 pounds off and you can split the cost onto two interest-free flexible payments love it 13.50 each right and back to sue okay so i've used the picked raspberry the oxide because they're quite good at, with stamping actually and i'm going to do um let's see especially for you let's use that especially for you this christmas i do find with the oxides to get more ink on them, to pat the stamps onto the top of the pad okay. rather than going like this. I found that you get a bit more ink if you do it that way. To take the stamp to the ink rather than the ink yes. to the stamp. Yes, yeah, just for these oxides I find. And then just leave it there for a couple of seconds just to soak through. That's and nice. then a bit of fussy cutting. So this is this. I mean, this is a good process. If you're a bit too um, timid about actually stamping onto your card base, because if it doesn't come out, you know, you, you wouldn't want to create all this again. So if you fussy cut them out, then you can just place it as well anywhere that you like. It's going to go over there, and then these can be cut out. Individual words as well, I quite like. And then if you bring in some foam pads. That's it, I've got some here. It is beautiful. 
And this is once again one of these cards that you would make for that special person. Yes. This is one yeah. of the, like your, and we've all got them. These are one of your, your Marks and Sparks, your, Denim, your Debenhams, your Selfridges cards that you buy for those special people and everybody else gets the ones out of the box where you get three for a fiver. <laughs> You get them ones. These are, the, these are the cards that you make for the special people because you take your time and you, learn, you put your love into them. <laughs> and then it's not so flat looking then if, you've, um, if you place them Look sort of that. on foam pads as well. And I also like this, your favourite set, this one, isn't it? Oh, the twig. Yes. Love the twig. I do actually adore the star, the star stamp. There's two actually. There's this size. And there's and this little diddy one as well. Oh, a little star. So I'm going to use those as well. And then you, once you've stamped those out, you can, you've got the star shapes as well here to die, to cut, die them cut them. St everything sticking, which I've done here. It's a collection of stars. So I'm going to fix these onto my card as well, just to decorate with a few stars. And I'm going to keep them dead upright as well rather than random okay i'd quite like to keep them dead upright put the c2 there and then if i can just follow the wording on the other side so that it reveals this side as well and then the christmas especially this christmas don't be afraid to cut your little foam pads in half. A craft knife's really good for this. That's it. So you make sure that's level. And oh, then so add if a you few... use a craft knife, it, your scissors won't get bonged up because all my scissors oh, get bonged yes. up with. Yes, yeah. Yeah, just go in and cut them and pick them up. It's a good tool, a craft knife. I do like that. <laughs> and then I've got one that I've finished with all my stars on. Oh, that is beautiful. If you stand that, oh, oh, look at that. You could put your, yeah, you could put your little gems on the tree, as little signing baubles in oh, there. Oh, yes, you can decorate the tree. Yeah, little gems would be gorgeous. And I reckon yeah. if you were clever enough, because you like, oh, my one view is very clever. If you got those little cork lights, you could feed the lights through it and have the little power pack on the back so the Christmas oh, tree would light up. Yeah, gorgeous. I'm here all week.